good morning. Nice to meet all of you. I was asking the Lord, Lord, I want a word from you. What is the word you want to release today? And I was also praying the Lord put me this word on my heart. I'm reading Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And this is the word the Lord was talking to me. This is a time where people are struggling. We can see war taking place. So many things fear, pandemic coming one after the other. We do not know where we are going. As believers, even believers are struggling because the fear has gripped the people because we do not know when death will come. But as all this is happening, the Lord is telling us, wait upon the Lord. What does it mean waiting upon the Lord? Because waiting upon the Lord gives strength. This was, this was a promise, a supernatural, a renewing strength for the children of Israel. Isaiah is writing because the children of Israel were under the exile, under the Babylon. They were in a place where they thought God has forgotten us. God is no more with us because they were under the bondage. They were slaves. And in the word it says, Isaiah 40, 27, the people thought like this. They said, why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my just claim is passed over by my God. They thought God has forgotten us. God don't care about us. At the time, Isaiah's promise was, Isaiah is reminding like this, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases the strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Today morning, God wants to renew your strength. Whatever you are going through in your life, whatever for a decision to make, God is saying, wait upon me. You may think like, God is not bothered about me. He don't care. He cares for you. He loves you. Because that's why God so loved the world that he gave only begotten son. Whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Today, God wants to remind who he is. He's an everlasting God. He's a mighty, powerful God. His power is not weakened. Whenever the things are happening, people think, where is God? When the war is taking place, why innocent people are dying? Why, where is God? That's the question people are asking. Why innocent people are dying if God cares? God cares. He cares. He's still in the throne. We mustn't take that picture out of. But in the last days, he said, I will shake the heavens. I will shake the nation. I will shake the leaders. That's what is happening. Why? Because he is getting ready to come. Jesus is coming very, very soon. Before he comes, he wants to bring his glory. He wants to release his glory. That's what is happening. 
But today, he wants to strengthen you. He wants to say that, I care for you. I am not forgotten you. I will give you strength. You may say, I am weak. But what are you doing? Waiting upon the Lord is, what does that mean? Waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord is trusting him. As Proverbs says like this, I like to read Proverbs 3, 5. I love this verse. If anybody have got, you can please read. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Waiting upon the Lord means asking help from God. Asking, Lord, I believe whatever I ask, that you are able to do it. You are able to turn around things. Those things sometimes make to see like they're turning into a bad situation, but you have to believe God can turn the bad things into good. He has done it. Sometimes we think in my life, I have seen so many uh, miracles. I have to tell you, I am a missionary who came to this country 22 years ago. When I came, the Lord gave me a date and said, on the 10th of March, you will be in United Kingdom. So I applied for my visa. When I applied, the embassy rejected my visa. Now I have got a date saying that you will be on the 10th of March in United Kingdom. So as I applied, my visa was rejected. And I went to the Lord, and I start praying, and I say, Lord, they rejected my visa. You say, I'm going. So what is happening? And as I was praying, I heard a voice from the Bible. It's Isaiah 11. There's a verse. The Lord of hosts has proposed this. Who can deny it? The Lord's mighty hand is stretched out. Who can divert it? That's it. I took the word, and I started to pray. I said, Lord, if you are saying you have proposed that who can deny because you are mighty God, you are the creator of the universe, you are the king of kings, you are the Lord of lords. I was praying and I heard the voice say, take some money and go back to the embassy. Right, okay, I was rejected, I stand, but I, by faith I went to the embassy and I said, my visa is rejected, can I face an interview? They said, oh, no, no, you're already rejected, so we can't give you. I said, please, give me a chance. I don't know what happened. The lady said, have you got money? I said, yes, pay the money, but the money is not refunded, okay? And gave me a date. So I came home, and I started praying. And the miracle was, by faith, I told my cousin, book a flight for me to go on the 10th of May, landing to United Kingdom. And he was laughing, Virginia, we told the visa, you can't go to, you can't book a ticket. I said, no, my visa is coming. By faith. And then he said, there are no flights that is going to UK on the 10th of March landing. Then God can't make a mistake for me. And I said, Lord. And suddenly after a week, he said, there's a flight coming from Singapore touching Sri Lanka and going to United Kingdom. I said, that is my flight. That's my flight. That is the flight. And book for me. And he was laughing because he's not a Christian. And no, short story. And, and he booked and said, okay. And I said, my visa is coming. And I went for the interview. The Lord has prepared somebody for me. And by the grace of God, I got my visa. And I landed on the 10th of March at 6.30 at United Kingdom Airport, Heathrow Airport. Amen? Yes, amen. Amen. amen? Amen. That's the thing. Sometimes things don't work. 
When God says something, it will not immediately happen that way. Sometimes you have to face. But the thing is, that means it's not God is not in charge. God is in charge. He wants to show his mightiness because he's a God who keeps his promise. He said, I am not a man to lie. Amen. He is God. He is faithful to his promises. He is faithful to his word. His word says, whatever I speak, it will not go empty. It will accomplish what I desired. Amen. This is the Lord we have. A God who is mighty who is so powerful. Today he wants to remind you. He wants to give in your weakness strength. He wants to give power wherever you are struggling. The thing is, as I said, wait on the Lord. Acknowledge him in everything what you do. Believe, ask help, call upon his name. That's what he's telling, nothing else. Waiting upon the Lord is not anything else. Always Looking, because Psalm 121 says, I lift my eyes towards the heavens where my help comes from. The Lord who created heaven and earth. Amen. So our help comes from nowhere. Our help comes from the Lord who created. So are you weary this morning? Are you weak? Because the Israelites were weak in the physical as they are spiritual. They have given up hope. Because they are under the slavery. Still God has forgotten. There is no way for us. They forgot who God was. But God still loved them. And he made a way. For them to come out of it. It's a God, supernatural miracles he did. And he brought his people. Today it's the same God wants to same thing. Yesterday, today, forever. He is the same. He will never change. He will never change. Amen. Because when I'm, I was a young girl when I lost my father. And I was a rebellious person. At that time is the time the Lord touched me. And I had cancer. I had breast cancer. The cancer was a genetic thing in my family. But four people had cancer, bone cancer, womb cancer, breast cancer, all kind of cancers. And that is the time I challenged God. I said, if you are a living God, you say you are the living God, prove to me. If you give me life, I will live. If you want me to die, I'm ready to die. I was like that. He said, I will give you life. And you will be a testimony and you will preach my gospel. And he healed me. Amen. And that's why I became a missionary. I gave my life. And I am today. I'm in good health. Amen. I'm married and I've got two girls. Amazing, isn't it? This is the Lord we worship. You must know who we are in him. You can trust him. You can. Put all your weakness, all your weariness, because he wants to give you power. The power what he gives, no one can give. You know why he gives us power? Because the Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. I want to read that. Matthew eleven twenty eight says like this. Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Today God wants to give you rest. I read it in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, now Jesus is calling. Come all those who are weary, all those who are weak, come, I will give you rest. Why? Because Jesus died for you. He paid the penalty for you. He went through the judgment for my sin and for your sin. Not only he died on the cross, he resurrected from the dead. And he became the powerful one. Every power, what Adam lost, he gained it back from the Satan. And today he has given us back. What Adam lost, 
Jesus redeemed it. And today, that's why I said, I will give you power. Wow. So today is calling you. If you are heavy laden, if you are burdened or weary or faint or weak, God is calling you. That's why we look to Jesus. We, we did a beautiful communion. We took partake in his communion because we believe in the crucifixion. We believe in the resurrection. Amen. So God is telling today, we have power in him to overcome. God is calling you, whatever you are going through, one thing understand, he cares for you. Sometimes the devil tell, oh, you are no good. He has got so much of people, how he cares. That's a big lie. You have to understand in Christ alone, you are special. Individually, God sees each one of us. He sees you and me the way he's seeing equality. There are no partiality in God. We are the same because each one of us are being created in his image. Amen. So that's what God wants to tell you today. He is calling you. He is calling. Come and wait upon me. So don't look at the media. When you look things, what is happening, your spirit is getting weakened. That's what I see, people. They are getting weakened. These things are going to happen. More things are going to come. More shaking is going to come. He is preparing us to wait on him. That's the only place. Not the government. Not the leaders. They cannot do things. But waiting on him. When we wait upon the Lord, he will give strength. He will give you strength day to day to face what is coming. Face to face to face all those challenges. That's what he's calling us. To wait on him. To acknowledge him. And to ask that we need help from him. Amen. So today I want to tell this is the message God gave me. And waiting is not working for God. We say we are working for God and he will do the balance. No, waiting is acknowledging him. Lord, I need help. I need you. I need you. I need you in everything what I do. My everything, acknowledging everything what you do. Do not lean on your own understanding. So when you come to that place, he is ready to help you in whatever you are going through. Whatever is making you faint or weary, he wants to give power into that situation and to help you. Amen? So I want to pray with a prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. As your word says, wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Father God, whoever is right now in weak, in spirit, in physical, I pray, Father, that you will empower each one of them, Lord. We come to you. As your word said, come to me, those who are weary, those who are faint. I will give rest. That's the only place we can see today. We can't go anywhere else. There are so many things happening around the world. But we this morning... We decide, we choose to come to you. We want to wait upon you because we know as we wait on you, you will renew our strength like eagles to soar with you. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, as we wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, as we wait upon the Lord. Yes, Lord, as we wait on you, we will receive your strength. We will receive your power. And I pray today in this place, Lord, whoever is waiting upon you in the coming days, that you will physically, spiritually, you will empower them. You will, Lord, strengthen them to face the day today. And that they will know God cares for me. He loves me. Jesus, we thank you for what you have done. 
Thank you, Jesus, that we can come to you knowing that you have paid the ransom. You have finished everything for us. So this morning, as we open our hearts, Lord, bring closer to you. Strengthen us. Empower us so that we will reveal your glory in the coming days. In the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all the darkness, we will be strong. Because our faith is in you. Because we are, our eyes are upon you, Lord. So I pray, bless each one of them as they go. In the coming days, they will see your power, your strength in their life. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our life. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Father God. Amen. 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 Thank you.